you're going to lose your kingdom in a heartbeat and there's going to be people coming over the hill. They're going to take everything away from you. We're going to put you out in a desert with the mind of an animal until you realize what the reality is of what this is that you're doing here with these people. What, what is this social will that you're bringing into the world by having all the bricks have your name on it? Every time they make a brick, they have to remember they're slaves. <coughs> That's the message. And so he actually did go in the desert for seven years, raving like an animal, and then had an awakening and came back and passed the kingdom to his son, and his son did exactly what he did, and he had his, that's the handwriting on the wall, you know. This is the book of Daniel, if you're interested. So <clears throat> this idea of the unfolding of an action in time and through time, that's will. And how we relate the intent of that action going through time, that in the ancient world was called magic. If you wanted something to happen, you made sure you did it when the planets were in the right space, and then you repeated it when they got harmonic again. And then you repeated it again when they got harmonic because the people back then understood the nature of the will because they lived in the will of nature. And we don't. So our magic is just, I push the button and it happens, who cares? Something happens, but we pass, we pass the implications on to things like the earth through climate change and things like that. That's where we're awakening to will. So the shifting in technology, the rising of the challenges of the global idea, this is, in my understanding, the hierarchies are helping us understand the nature of the will in technology by presenting us with difficulties. They are redeeming in a way, although they have to do it in freedom. So it's just like Nebuchadnezzar, he had to be, have the mind of an animal. We're seeing in the mass consciousness people arising with the minds of animals who can't function society, who don't have empathy for other people, things like that, as just a given. Yeah, so maybe we'll spend a couple years in the desert and then we'll have an awakening. <laughs> so there, this idea of this challenge, I'd like to give you a couple pictures of how we can understand some of the aspects of it. The first one is abstraction. So a couple of months ago, I was teaching at a Zen center in San Francisco, and <clears throat> there's a famous, there was a famous Zen painter. And the practice in Zen for the monks, the painters, was they had to grind the ink, they had to meditate into the grinding of the ink, then they had to meditate until they were absolutely clear of the motifs they wanted to paint inwardly and to permeate themselves with will. And then they pick up the brush and this painter's task was to paint a perfect circle in very absorbent rice paper with one stroke. Perfect circle. And after many, many, many tries, he got a perfect circle. That's the, that's the way the ancient people understood will. That you have to work on yourself inwardly in order to get the will to transcend the limitations of the natural world, which is to make a perfect circle on a very absorbent rice paper. Well, when I was at the Zen Museum there in the, in the Zendo that they have in San Francisco at the Zen Center, there was a, a photo of that famous painting on the wall. And 
down the hall from it was an eight foot by eight foot representation of that done in acrylics. And the kind of contemporary greens and reds. It was, it was a nice decorative piece, but it was a total abstraction because it, it was eight foot by eight foot and it probably took the person a couple weeks to paint it. There was none of the Zen will consciousness in it because it had been abstracted. The intent of the original creation of the image had been moving very far away from the intent to make a replication of this, to make, you know, a memento mori, you know, a dead thing of this, what was a living act of will and a meditative will. And the irony was, I, I was working with some people from Brazil and the leader of the group, one of the people bought him a gift from the group. They were leaving that day, going back to Brazil. They presented him this package and in the package was a small plate with a photo replication of the big painting on a little plate. <laughs> and I looked at that as I was like, well, that's an abstraction of an abstraction of an abstraction. And I watched his face. He's from Brazil. He's definitely not into Zen. And he opened the box, and there was the plate. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I was like, I have no idea what this is, but thanks anyway. <laughs> and that mood is a will issue. I have no idea what this thing is in my pocket that's beeping, but thanks anyway. I, I, I don't know what's happening. There's something down there. I know it's not working. I call somebody and they've come and hopefully they fix it. It's, it, that's, the doorway is abstraction, where the forces that are operating in the will get removed and removed and removed and removed. And that leads then to data taking the place of an actual activity. And there's a story that was recently in the news based on that. It was the Twitter hack that sent the stock market into a $2 billion paper loss in a couple minutes. So some people hacked a Twitter account and in the robots that scan looking for these things, for the account, they just scan words. And in the hack, the words that they used were Obama, White House, bombing, hurt. The computers, the robots that, that roam the web, picked those four words up, threw it onto Twitter account, and it turns out that the people who do point and click trading with the stock market use Twitter to track news events. So when they're tracking a news event, they want to know what the breaking news is so they can get out and get in. Well, when that came up, everybody got out. And it went limit down in about three seconds and down and down and down and down. <coughs> and before they found out it was a hack, two billion dollars in paper were gone. This is an interesting will picture of the issue around abstraction leading to data standing for things and the ability to make these kinds of trades. Now, the, they're trying to put brakes on this process of trading. There has to be a couple second delay between when you click and when, it can, when the trade can be active. But it's a picture. It's a picture of kind of consciousness that we have to learn to deal with when this kind of will takes over and the force of it starts to move beyond our ability to deal with it. And the third picture is the issue of the media. So, uh, how many of you saw the, um, the Olympics? 
And pandemonium means all the demons. Pan, <coughs> demonium. That was the name of the ceremony. <laughs> and if you saw it, it was pandemonium. <laughs> now, in that ceremony, there were dancers. And the dancers, the, uh, the ceremony was, uh, there was technology. It had gone, uh, Britain was uh, celebrating that they were the place where the Industrial Revolution was founded. So there are all these men simulating, pounding on molten metal and all of these things of the rise of technology, the rise of uh, industrial consciousness. And there were dancers. And the dancers were doing coordinated movements like this. <laughs> and if you know anything about that, you know that those are the grips and signs of the Freemason uh, lodges. So, in essence, what was being enacted globally was a Masonic ritual. Globally. Interesting picture of how data then becomes media, becomes imagery, becomes replicated, 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 to make a kind of consciousness of will that is just uh, going into very interesting places. I said to my wife, wow, this is big here. That, that, that was a, a big event. So those pictures, that, that kind of does Nebuchadnezzar one up big time. <laughs> you know, forget the bricks, man. We're, you know, we want to influence people's minds, do this. So these qualities of abstraction and <coughs> turning events into data and then turning data into media, this is, a, this is a, a realm having to do with the aspects of imagination. <coughs> and the development of, of living picture imagination, the basis of the Waldorf curriculum, is the esoteric training for the cultural advancement of this age. Rolf Steiner calls this a manas age. Manas, M-A-N-A-S. <coughs> and the purpose of a monastic age, not monastic, <laughs> but monastic. The purpose of the age of manas is to create a living, imaginative, force in the soul, to create living imaginations of the social realm. That's exactly our task, <coughs> is to create <coughs> images in people that allow them to awaken in other people. And we can't awaken in another, many, many of the symptoms of neurological complaints arising today have to do with the inability to awaken in another because we're stuck in this risk-reward pattern in the striatum. This is just neurological. Tomorrow I'll give a little bigger picture of these neurological issues because our neurology is a picture of the fall and the redemption. It's written in us. We are a book, so to speak, of the past, the present, <coughs> and the future. And it has to do with dealing with images inwardly in, my, in myself so that I can control images that are in me. When 
I can control with my will images that are in me. In the ancient world, I would be called a mage. M-A-G-E. I would in, I would control in mage. I don't know how that comes out in French. Is it the same? Yeah. 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 I mage. Image. Mage. Ick. Yes. So I am a mage when, uh, by controlling inner images, I make magic. And the plural of mage is magi. So it's not bad. So the Magi were called to be present at the birth, at the, at the adoration of the new Adam, because that's their task, that's the task of this age. So I'd like to read you another quote. This is from Carl Stegman, in a book called The Other American. Cosmic forces of will, when they are cut off from the cosmos, turn negative and destructive. The moral forces of giving then turn to ruthless self-assertion. The will to self-sacrifice then becomes the will to sacrifice and destroy others. However, since this will came out of the spirit, it is capable of being transformed again back into spirit. That's a biggie. Because it came out of the spirit, it can be transformed back into spirit. However, no world trans transforming reality is inherent in thinking consciousness. Thinking is only ideologically significant. When he says thinking, he's not, if you're a philosophy of freedom aficionado, you just want to, oh, what do you mean? Yeah, no, not that kind of thinking. That's living thinking. He means thinking that creates thoughts. Thinking that creates thoughts is not living. It has died into the thought. Yeah, I know that's a strange thing, but I think, therefore, I am dead. <laughs> Brain dead. <laughs> but we should say, I thought. I mean, sometimes in my course we call it thoughting, which is Thinking that produces thoughts is dead. But the thinking that is searching and striving and the will that is striving for the thoughts, that's living. A little quote from Rudolf Steiner. How can we overcome the anxiety of our times, 1916? The unfolding of the consciousness soul will only proceed through consciously overcoming superficial sympathies and antipathies. Independence of thought should gradually penetrate all spheres of life, but it will have to oppose the blind belief in authority that is becoming more prevalent everywhere as specialists seem to gain the exclusive rights to truth. When social groups are formed, the individuals who make up these groups should be the most important thing, and not some program or list of statutes. <laughs> <laughs> 